Welcome to the Strategic Travel Entrepreneur. My name is Rita Perez. Hello. I've been a travel advisor for over 10 years and am navigating this winding road of entrepreneurship with you. I created this podcast because I wanted to share all the things I've learned from leaders both in and out of our industry that I really wish I would have known way back then. But alas, the important thing is I'm aware of them now and I want you to be too. Ready for this week's show? Let's jump in. Hello, strategic travel entrepreneur. How are you doing today? Happy September 1st. That's when this episode is airing. It is the first day of the last month of the third quarter. I had to say that slow to make sure I wasn't going to flub it up myself. And man, September, I feel like coming into it is a pretty powerful month. I'm going to keep this a little bit like not as in depth of an episode, hopefully just be a little bit of a lighter episode because I know we've had a couple of heavy episodes. I'm also wanting to crowdsource some information from you. And then this is also going to be like just a heads up on the amazing third or fourth, sorry, fourth quarter. See, I did flub it up. (laughs) The amazing fourth quarter that I have planned for all of you. And uh, I'm doing this for two reasons. One, I want to have a restful December. That was one of my biggest goals from last year is that I wanted to be able to not be in such like of a, oh my gosh, this ended up being like a cluster. September, all the burr months, September through December were kind of like that for me last year. And so I have already started planning for a lot of different events that are happening. So there's two more audio series. I am currently, I say casting, but (laughs) I've reached out to some amazing members of the travel industry community for that audio series. I have also started reaching out to pros both inside and outside of the industry for my annual virtual event that is called Prep for Wave Week. And that is slated for the last week in October. It is to help prep you for wave season of 2024. And I keep bumping it up. And I knew like October was always the goal for me to have this event because... I know in travel, there's a lot of people that are traveling either personally, professionally, or you have clients that are traveling in these last months. So how are you supposed to also be planning out how your 2024, the next year is supposed to look if you're waiting until those busy months to plan it? And so that is why Prep for Wave Week has been bumped up. And then I also have my marketing strategy planning session that happened, I believe, December of last year will now be, no, not October, November of this year. Again, because I want you planning and thinking ahead. Um, I feel like that is not only like just the smart thing to do, plan ahead, that's what everybody says to do, but I want you to go into the new year with ease and already knowing that you're having a plan so that you can go in a little bit more calmly than maybe you went in it this past year. And so that's just kind of a brief overview is that there will be an event at the beginning of October, an event at the end of October, an event in November, and then an event in December. And that's kind of like what's really going to wrap things going on here in the strategic travel entrepreneur world. Now, don't worry, you're going to get your weekly podcast interview, or they'll either be solo episodes of myself, or you're going to get interviews from amazing people, either inside or outside of the industry, that have relevant topics. Um, but kind of like what's been in my head has really, you know, I've talked about developing a framework based on what I tell a lot of you really to do. And that's, it's really come to like a three point framework in your business. Many of you are feeling overwhelmed. And you know, I always like, I, I talk a lot about marketing, but there's some other things that have to happen 
in order for you to have effective marketing and not only effective marketing, but marketing that you like to do and marketing that also works for you. And so, yes, you are throwing spaghetti at the wall, but I don't want you to have to throw spaghetti at the wall. There are so many different techniques and things that are out there and strategies that you can utilize, and some will work for you, some won't work for you. Your neighbor, what will work for them may not work for you. I don't want you to feel discouraged, and especially going into the last four months of the year, I don't want you to quit. I don't want you to give up. You have gotten this far. What we need to do or what we might need to do are just a few little tweaks because if you're listening to me and you're on the precipice of a super successful business, that is wonderful. And also, if you feel that way, please let me know because I would love to interview you and see kind of like unfold and break down what some of your layers of success are so that we can share it with our travel industry community. And if you are not, and you kind of have been the one that's bought all the courses, bought all the templates, you've done all the things that all the different gurus and everything have told you to do, and things are still not working, don't give up. I am with you. I have been there. It can be a very lonely feeling, but I need you to know every single business owner goes through this. Even the most successful people that you know have gotten to that place and may even have like seasons of being in that place still. And this is why my framework is so important because And I know it's kind of like this is it's the unsexy side of business, because when I say knowing your numbers, for some of you, that's hard. And like for me, that was hard. I just actually did this exercise myself. I went into the lead generation calculator to recalculate my numbers because I have some really big goals for myself. So one of my big goals is that I would like to pay off all my debts, like all the credit card stuff and all that within this next year. And I needed to know how I was going to do that. And that's really what the lead generation calculator does. So I plugged in my numbers. I have a new car payment. It's just a different car payment, same car, different payment. Um, I also am thinking about, you know, savings and putting money into investments. So thinking about like how much money I want to be doing or putting in there, how much money do I need to be earning? So I'm really looking forward and looking at the future. So I input my business number or my personal numbers, and then I went to business and kind of was like, oh yes, I have this tech now, or I'm going to get rid of this tech or uh, this tech is on my list and it probably needs to go (laughs) because I am not getting the max value out of this. So doing a lot of reevaluations that I am going to share because I don't think enough of us share numbers that much, but my yearly, my personal yearly income goal for next year, if I, not if, like when, like my goal is to pay off all my credit cards within the next year. So next year, like starting now-ish, my yearly income goal, oh shoot, now I forget the number, but I believe it was $159,000. And that does, that is inclusive of taxes and like credit card fees and all that. Um, And that is also overestimating that stuff because I'd rather generate more and owe less in taxes and all that than have made less and owe more. So uh, kind of like being proactive in that. So when I break that down, the next step is, okay, I have this number. How much revenue does that mean monthly? And that kind of broke down to like $13,000, $14,000 that I needed to make every single month. And from that, I broke it down even further thinking, okay, I need to sell this product. Like if I could sell this many products, this is going to get me to my 13,000 every year. If I sold this many products or if I sold this item, I would need to sell a hundred more or 50 more or whatever it is. So you see how kind of like reverse engineering, instead of like going into your business and being like, I'm just gonna sell everything and hope that everything sells, 
It's being much more intentional for what you are going to sell and pretty much like how are you going to sell it? Because when you know I need to sell 10 river cruises every single month or I need to sell 50 Alaska cruises every single month or I need to sell 20 sweet trips to an all-inclusive in Mexico every single month, then you know what you need to market in your business. And then is when you look at the marketing. And I know sometimes marketing can really be the distraction where you need all this other outside information to see where your marketing needs to be. Like if I'm thinking back to my theme park days and I I worked in the finance department, I handled labor and I worked a lot with the budgets for labor. So it was never (laughs) like, okay, we're going to sell all these tickets because we have to. It was broken down like a certain attraction needed to have 25 employees working on it for X amount of people that were in the park. So in order to support that, what kind of offers, what kind of promotions, what kind of things is the marketing department going to promote in order to make sure that all the labor is covered? And then if it comes to that day and enough people have not come into the park to cover the labor budget for everyone, how many people do we need to cut? How many hours do we need to cut so that we haven't gone over the budget now with the reevaluated budget? So, and I, I like to think of like real world because I know sometimes business seems almost like this like little fairy tale land because again, we all work independently, all work, we're not like in the same place, most of us. And so you're kind of like, well, what is so-and-so doing? And what is so-and-so doing? And so like being able to give these real world examples of how things actually work, I think that's another important thing to note that, you know, if you're in a big conglomerate like a theme park, there are so many different departments that are doing so many different things. Like the marketing part department, I could never see operating <laughs> one of the attractions in the park. Vice versa. There's people that have different skill sets. And it's different for us as business owners because we all start, it's just us running all the operation. And it's not until you start growing a little bit and start earning a little bit of revenue that you can be like, okay, I need to like pass this off to somebody who's an expert in their field, make sure that they are well paid so that they're doing excellent quality work that is really garnering the results that I want it to. Kind of going back into this reverse engineering section too. uh, And when we're talking about the calculator, when you're talking about your business expenses, what are your current business expenses? I've talked about cutting expenses, but what are also the expenses that you might want to have, might want to cover. Maybe that is a coach or a coaching program, or maybe there's been a course that you have been wanting to learn like a specific skill from, and you just haven't been able to because the revenue hasn't been there. Add that in, like having access to the calculators gives you a lot of freedom because you can come up with different scenarios. Because I did, I have the goal of paying off all my debt within a year, But if that doesn't happen, like what does it look like if I pay it off within two years instead? So I also did run those numbers. So we've got like the base of where we can get started our numbers. Then we figure out what products, what services. So is this like you're just offering a professional fee? Is this that you are maybe selling a couple of digital products now to your travel business? Does this mean that you've added some sort of travel club membership also? Those are all different sources of revenue. And if you're kind of like making a party mix of everything that you have, how many, so if we're thinking by month, I need to sell 10 river cruises, but that means that I also need to collect 10 service fees from that or I can get five new people into my travel club membership. There's so many different business models, so you have to figure out like what is your ideal product mix to get you to the amount of revenue that you wanna be making 
to hit your yearly income goal or a different variation of that yearly income goal. And then if you see that like maybe that's what your product mix is, you're going to be selling, focusing on European river cruises. You're going to be making sure that everybody pays a fee next year. And you're also going to do, you're also going to introduce a travel club membership. Those are the things that need to be promoted wherever you're promoting yourself. So is that through in-person networking? Do you have a radio ad? Shout out to a marketing business school student who does have a radio ad going out soon. Woohoo! Uh, do you, are you, do you have a podcast or are you podcast guesting? Um, do you have a weekly email? Are you on social media? All the different avenues that you can gain visibility for your business, you need to evaluate which ones are the best for you. And then you also need to make sure that those are the products that you're promoting. I think this is like the, the downside and I'm not knocking templates necessarily, but that's the downside of templates is that the templates are there just for marketing, whatever but they don't know what your income goal is and they don't know the products that you need to be selling. Now, some templates, like you can cater them exactly towards that, but I think a lot of the majority, you're still going to need to do a little bit of work to tailor the the promo that goes out there to you. And when I talk templates, I'm talking about independent templates. I'm not talking about supplier templates. Uh, Because you should know by now how I feel about supplier templates. If not, just just listen to some of the past episodes. So, and that's really it. So you know your numbers, you know your sales figures, what are what the product mix is that is going to get you to your sales, and then you're able to figure out, okay, from there, this is what I want to market, or this is how I want to market. This is how I want to promote that. Do you want to have a webinar? Do you have a weekly live show? Do you have a podcast? Again, there's so many different avenues. And from there, then you also have to set up the sales funnel because yes, you are marketing to get sales, but if there's no sales funnel for people to go to, so like, let's say you have a webinar at African Safaris and you're like, okay, thanks for coming. Bye. You have just like, I'm like, what are you doing? (laughs) What are you doing? Because if we're talking about promoting via webinars, you need to have that webinar registration page. You need to have people who register. There needs to be a funnel in your email autoresponder so that they're added to your email list. There needs to be different emails that are going out and being sent to them so that they know who you are and that you send follow-up information if they would like to join as an African safari or a group or whatever it might be. It just doesn't end there. There's like a, there's a roadmap (laughs) to these types of things. And that is really, uh, I think, and you heard it a couple weeks ago in my I Want You To Be Paid podcast episode, but that's really one of my big goals and big desires and things that I want to champion within you is that I want you to be paid. I want you to be profitable. I don't want you to do this alone. You don't have to do this business alone. And there's so many amazing people that can help with different parts of your business. But I also want you to get like this base information so that not only you know how to do it, but that it becomes a repetitive action, like a repetitive, I don't know what the word that I'm looking for is, but it um, it becomes something of repetition, um, habit, habit. There you go. It becomes some sort of habit that you're always checking in on your numbers. You're reevaluating consistently to be like, okay, I'm on track. I'm off track. I'm above track. Let's keep this above track going just in case. So that like, I am really passionate about that. I hope that it shows. I hope the information that you get in here in this podcast shows As always, I am always open to your feedback. I actually do have a question that I want to ask you. And so if you go into the show description, there will be a link. And I'm not sure how many questions. There may just be one question right now in that that little, um, not quiz, but it's like a little survey that I would like you to take. 
And that really is what income level are you striving for this next year? Either what's your yearly income goal or what's your monthly income goal? Uh, I would really love to know that and it will remain anonymous uh, just because I am working on a couple of different programs to help you out to really get you there in this next year. Um, so yes, please go ahead to the show description to uh, give me some of that information so that I can better assist you. And then as always, if you are needing some assistance, I know there have been so many travel business events recently. There's been Virtuoso Travel Week, CCRA Power Solution, uh, Nexion had their Connection Conference recently. If you have come off a high from those events are now kind of like, I don't know what I need to do with all these notes that I took. Uh, please reach out to me. Schedule a marketing consultation. Let's break down all that you learn. Let's break down some of these things with your income goal so that we can come up with a plan now to make sure that you are profitable in the most profitable season, the fourth quarter of the year. All right, you have a fantastic weekend and I cannot wait to see you next week. We're gonna really pack a punch next week because I think I'm going to be unveiling my framework that I keep talking about. All right, bye. Thanks for joining me on the podcast today. Remember to check out the show notes for all relevant links and resources from today's show. See you next time.